All right, welcome everyone. This is the Gorilla Studio 8 scheduling class. Welcome. Uh, glad you're here. Wanted to start right on time because we have a lot to cover. This is the first time that I am doing a uh, intro to scheduling class for version 8, which we just released a few weeks ago. So it's very exciting. A lot of really cool new features, which I'll go over some of those features. But in general, this is an intro class to the software and only to scheduling. We're going to have, if you wanted to sign up, also an intro to budgeting on Thursday, same time at uh, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard. Uh, and so if you wanted to see how budgeting works with scheduling, or if you're interested just in scheduling, and not, I'm sorry, just in budgeting and not scheduling, of course, you wouldn't be here if you're not interested in scheduling also, then please sign up for that one. Um, and that will be a Thursday. Okay, so we're going to get started. Now, the, the way I'd like to do this, if you don't mind, is if you have any questions as we go along, please feel free to chat them in, um, especially if they are related to the topic that I'm speaking about. Um uh feel free i will look over to the chat every once in a while even though my screen is kind of cluttered i'm trying to clean my screen up a little bit here for the presentation and we're gonna, we have a powerpoint and then we have the software so we're going to kind of go back and forth because i don't want to get lost so okay let us get started so this is intro to scheduling hopefully you're in the right place okay so what we're going to go over, I'm going to go over some of the things that we're going to go over. We're going to have five sections to this webinar. The first section is the screenplay section, and we're going to uh, concentrate on uh, how to get your screenplay into Gorilla. Basically, what types of screenplays Gorilla accepts, the proper formatting of your screenplay. And this is really important, and I'm going to go over this. Uh, I'm, I'm devoting a whole section to this whole uh, screenplay import because most of the issues that we get are importing screenplay issues. Tagging the screenplay in the screenplay, okay, not in Gorilla, in the screenplay. Using Format Assistant, which is a final draft tool to check your screenplay. And importing the screenplay into Gorilla, we'll then go into that. So that'll be the first section. The second section is going to be the breakdown, breakdown sheets, basically. And that is we're going to check the screenplay for errors, import errors. We're going to use um, uh, the edit and print screenplay feature, which is a brand new feature in Gorilla Studio 8. And if you wanted to print sides, how to tag the screenplay in Gorilla, as opposed to how to tag the screenplay in uh, the screenplay program. We're going to do that. We're going to go over element linking how to link two or more elements together, which is a really cool feature. We're going to go over element blackout, and that's basically blackout days for uh, cast or crew or elements. And then just how to manage your elements and categories in general. We'll go over that. The next section will be locations. And this is something I added in here. I, I usually don't do this in the intro class, but I thought uh, to add it into this into this one. And in this section, we're going to talk a little bit about the difference between what a location is and what a set is, because they are two different things. Uh, got a chat here. Will the recording be email, mailed out for those who are unable to stay the entire time? I am recording this, and uh, it will be posted on our website uh, probably maybe a few days after the the uh, today. So hopefully maybe by, by Friday, by Thursday or Friday, probably after the budgeting one is done. But yes, it is being recorded. You're welcome. Uh, so location versus set. How to create a location and how to link that location to scenes. So we're going to see how important that is when we go to the strip board. And then uh, location budget rates and how that works in the budget. Even though this is not, we're not going over the budget, I'm going to explain that. And then some of the location reports that we have. So this is a brand new section that I'm adding. Then we're going to get into shoot days. Okay, this is fun. Uh, how to create your calendar. This is, of course, after you've done your breakdown sheets. This is sort of the order that that you usually should do things. You know, the screenplay, then the breakdown, then the locations, and now the shoot days. So we're going to create our calendar. We're going to create and schedule crew for the shoot days. We're going to go over weather and atmosphere, and I put etc. because there's a lot of things there in the call sheet area that we're going to go over. 
So we're going to go over that and uh, printing a call sheet, call sheet, I'm sorry, and emailing the call sheet. Okay, we're going to go over that. And then the last section is the strip board section. And we're going to go over uh, scene timing. This is a brand new feature in, in Gorilla, scene timing. Uh, how to create a strip board. We're going to go over that. Drag and drop a strip board, arranging strips, how to, how to get that all done. And customizing the board, printing the board, and then some of the reports. I put shooting schedule report, but we'll go over a few of the reports that Gorilla has. And then we're going to have our Q&A. Okay, so that's a lot of stuff to go over. So hopefully I can go over uh, at least most of this uh, as we go through. All right, let's get started. Okay, the first thing is section one, screenplay. So we're going to talk a little bit about the types of screen, uh, screenplays that Gorilla accepts. And pretty, for the most part, accepts all the, the major uh, screenplay format uh, formats that you have out there. Uh, the first one is Final Draft, which is the FDX file format. It's also the S as in SAM. Well, really as in scheduling. SEX really stands for, as opposed to what you think it might stand for, it stands for scheduling uh, exchange. I think it's exchange or scheduling export or something like that. So the uh, final draft will import the FDX and the SEX uh, file. And they're both different files, and I'll explain that. Movie Magic Screenwriter, which imports just the SCX file, okay? That's actually their file format, the SCX file format. Uh, Fade In and Writer Duet, which also support the FDX file format. And then the Fountain file format. Now, I'm not going to go over that in this uh, lesson, in this webinar, but the, and what the Fountain format is. But if you're not using a screenplay uh, and you don't have your, your screenplay in a, in, a, in a proper screenplay program, you could use Word or Celtics and then export that to, to convert that to a fountain format, which I'm, again, I'm not going to go over. We have a video on that in case you're interested. Okay. So those are the types of screenplay uh, that Gorilla accepts. So proper formatting. Now, this is incredibly important. So I'm going to go over a little bit about uh, the scene heading and how to format that. Uh, action, character, parenthetical, dialogue, and transition. So let's let's pop over into final draft real quick. And uh, don't save. We don't need that. And let me close some of these windows here. We don't need all these windows open. Okay. So we are now looking at final draft. Okay. And final draft, for the most part, is the most popular screenwriting program out there. In fact, we are premier partners with final draft. So when they come out with a new release, we are usually right behind them. Um, so that's really important to understand that if you are using a, a screenplay program, we do recommend Final Draft. Okay, so let's go over the screenplay formatting here. We have uh, the first scene, exterior Beverly Hills, California day. So let's take a look carefully at the set field, okay? The interior set field. So we have EXT and then or ENT or INT for interior. Then the set, which is here, and then dash, and then day. So this is the this is a properly formatted um, set field, i.e. set field, okay? Same with the second one, exterior, Hollywood day, down here, interior, apartment, uh, 6C, dash, day. Um, it's important to understand that the, after the dash, you must have a time of day, okay? Day, morning, night, that kind of thing. Some people will put, later or or moments later or continued this is not the place to do that okay i've i've seen tons of screenplays even professional screenplays that sell for lots and lots of money they'll put continued or later later that day well you know when you are a production manager and you see a, a, a scene ir, ir, you know you don't have the screenplay in front of you and it says later that day you know you don't know what that means so don't do that always put a time of day there all right so let me see if I have a, another slide here with this. Here, here we go. Perfect. So for example, uh, interior house day is the right format. Uh, there, are, there are three sections, the interior, exterior, the set, or the time of day. So notice that in this uh, slide here on the left-hand side, this is the correct way to format your screenplay. All right. All of them have a period after the INT field. They don't have a dash. Okay. The dash is supposed to separate the time of day from the set, okay? So only one period and only one dash. If you don't do it this way, it will not import properly into Gorilla, okay? Here's some improper formatting uh, examples. 
So notice there's two dashes, and I've seen all these. So that's why they're here. So we have um, uh, ext dash dash house dash dash day. I've seen that. Uh, it's not going to come in properly. You get, it's going to come in unknown, basically, into grow up. Um, two, uh, two periods, exterior period, house period, night. Again, not the right way to do it. Interior office continued, not the, way, the right way to do it. Later and moments later, not the, way, the right way to do it. Okay, so uh, let's go back to, I don't want to spend too much time on this because we want to concentrate on Gorilla, but the only reason I'm spending time on this is because there's so many tech support issues with the formatting of screenplays. So uh, that's important to do. Another one is is uh, is parentheticals. And for example, down here, it'll say uh, Barney, which is the name of the character, into phone, which is fine. No problem with that. In, that's a parenthetical. And then janitor. Some people will put, you know, a whole synopsis here of, of description, you know, uh, which is not proper uh, because you don't want that in a parenthetical. You only want, you could put that in the action, but not in the parenthetical. Parenthetical should be a very small, minor direction from the writer, okay? Not, uh, you know, a, um, you know, Hamlet's uh, soliloquy, you know? Okay. So that's important too. Uh, let's go back to PowerPoint. Let's see what we've got. Production. Okay, so now we're going to talk about tagging the screenplay in the screenplay, okay? And a lot of people want to do this, which is totally fine. So you can go into Final Draft and go to what's called Tags Mode, okay? So if you go to Production and then go to... Now, this, uh, you could do this in Final Draft and you could do this in Movie Magic Screenwriter also. Okay, but I'm only showing it in final draft. So if you go into tags mode, what that does is, of course, it takes you out of writing mode. You're no longer writing. So if you start typing here, it's not going to work. You're in what's called tagging mode. And it's meant to tag your screenplay with elements, which is props, costumes, set dressing, et cetera, that you need for your schedule. Now, in this sample here, you can see there's a whole bunch of colored words on the page, and each one of these colored words or phrases is a tag, and the color uh, is matched to a category, and I'll get to that in a bit. So you can certainly do this in, in Final Draft. You just highlight a word and tag it and attach it to a certain category. If you do that, this information will come into Gorilla when you import your screenplay into Gorilla. The tags will come in. So that's one way to tag, or at least to start to tag, but a lot of people only start the tagging here and they finish the tagging in their scheduling program. Okay, so that's tagging in Gorilla. I'm sorry, in Final Draft. Let's go back to here. Oh, so characters with dialogue are automatically tagged. Okay, so because, I mean, let's go back to uh, Final Draft, uh, because very clearly, and here's the character in scene four, right? Scene four, basement. Here's a character, Barney. Very clearly, if you highlight Barney and, and sort of highlight it, you could see up here we're in tags mode, right? Notice up here it says character. Very clearly, that is a character. Final Draft knows that's a character, as opposed to, you know, frenzied climax. Final Draft does not know what that is. Final Draft doesn't even know that this right here, let me get out of tags mode here, okay? Uh, Final Draft doesn't even know that this is a character, right? So notice that Barney is in the, the action, but Barney is a character. So Final Draft doesn't know, it's just a text. It's just a text field, okay? But luckily he is, Barney is, is, is uh, got some dialogue here, so he'll come in as, as, as tagged. So if, for example, we didn't have that in Final Draft and Barney did not have any dialogue, you would have to tag Barney because Final Draft does not know that you have any characters in this scene, okay? All right, let's go back to our presentation here. Our, our, uh, so tagging in the screenplay. Format assistant, okay. Very, very, very important before you export your screenplay to, uh, to, uh, to Gorilla. You want to use format assistant. This is a tool that's in Final Draft that looks for errors, okay? And here are some of the common uh, errors that I will, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll show you. So for example, uh, let's see, 
Okay, so I have, uh, anytime you have a dialogue right after a, a dialogue line, um, you should have either another character that speaks or action. And here in this instance, you have dialogue and you could see that up here, dialogue. And then the next one is action. If I were, so let me, let me try this. Let me do format. I have not tested this, which is not smart when I do these seminars, but if I do format assistant right now, which is right here under the tools menu and check it out, it says no errors found. Okay. This is a clean screenplay. There are no errors in this, uh, in this screenplay. Now, if I were to go here and do a return right there, oh, it's after the period, let's do that. Okay. And notice that by default, it shows it goes to character because it assumes, you know, after the, you either want character or action. But if I change that, and you could certainly do this in Final Draft, okay? And so, no, no, I want to write my more dialogue. And I say, this is more dialogue right here, even though that looks fine, okay? It totally looks fine. If you go to Tools and Format Assistant, notice immediately there's a rule violation. It says, hold it. You cannot have a dialogue after a dialogue. And you're like, wait a minute, but I want the dialogue to continue. The, the problem is in the XML file, I know I'm getting a little technical here. You have a dialogue tag and another dialogue tag, and that will cause an error when you import. So in order to fix it, it says must be fixed manually. All you got to do is even though it doesn't look like anything, you click here, do that do that and it's on the same tag okay and now if i do format assistant no errors now there's other errors that are i'm not going to go through all of them but format assistant will help you go through the entire screenplay and see if there are any errors so this is very very important to do okay once this is all done um you can import your screenplay into Grill. and there still might be an error that comes in and that if that's the case contact us we, we can certainly help you with that because there's a lot of possible errors now the other format that Gorilla accepts, now this is the FDX file. If I save this right now, save as, and uh, let me open that up a little bit. And let's see here. Uh, uh, I really don't like these new Macs. Sorry about that. But, um, oh yeah. If I save right now by doing save or save as, it will save this as an FDX. It's a little grayed out here. Hopefully you could see that as an F as in Frank, or F as in final, DX file, FDX, which is really an XML file, okay? Final Draft just uses FDX. However, if I go to export file, um, export, script, notice that's a different, a different action. You can then no, notice down the file format down here. There's other another format you can choose, actually quite a few. There's one here called scheduling exports. So I was wrong, remember I said exchange, export. Scheduling export, which is the dot S as in Sam EX file. Okay. And then you could save it as the dot SCX file. This will also import into Gorilla. Now, the only difference is the SCX file doesn't bring in all the screenplay display, It'll bring in all the tags, but not the screenplay display. But you won't get any errors. I guarantee you, if you do the SCX file export, um, and if you're having problems with the FDX, the SCX will not give you any errors. Okay. Anyway, so we're done with Final Draft. I think it's ready to go to Gorilla, yeah? Okay, let's see. Uh, importing, okay, FDX file. Another thing, FDX file does take a little bit longer to import than the SCX because the SCX will take a few seconds. And the more tags you have, the longer the import. That's not a big deal, but it'll go through and tag all that stuff. Okay, let's go into the breakdown. All right, the first thing you want to do, I'm going to launch Gorilla. And when we first launch Gorilla, this is... Uh, um, what you're going to see, you're going to see what's called the project manager, okay? And on the left-hand side, you've got your schedules. And on the right-hand side, you have your budgets. Now, these are just samples that come with the demo. You can, of course, delete them if you want. In fact, I encourage you to just look at them quickly and delete them so it doesn't clutter your project manager screen. So let's go into one. This is one, All both all three of these, by the way, uh, were imported from Final Draft. Well, I think this one was Movie Magic Screen Writer. I don't remember. But in any case, uh, so let's go ahead and click on it. So we're going to click on the schedule to go into the breakdown sheet. So when you first import a screenplay, and by the way, let me just show you real quick. Let me go back to the manager. To import a screenplay into Gorilla, you would just go down to the plus sign here on the very bottom. 
click on that and select the import screenplay option. And then notice it'll give you the same thing that I just told you, the FDX, SCX, or Fountain. If you have a screenplay in the PDF file format, so someone sent it to you, a writer sent you in PDF, you can get that in also uh, by converting it to the FDX file if you have Final Draft. And if not, you could send it to us and we could convert it for you. So if you select the FDX file, and then it'll give you some common FDX issues. It'll tell you run format assistant before you do this. It gives you all this wonderful stuff. And once you do that, you select the file and go into it, you're gonna see something like this, which is the breakdown sheet screen. Now you'll see these video pop-ups come up a whole bunch because we do have videos for all these uh, um, little sections. You could watch them, close them, click do not remind, whatever. Okay, so once you are in the breakdown sheet, I'm going to go over now what what we what we're looking at. Now, obviously, it looks pretty cool because we've got our color, our scenes on the right. We've got our uh, a, a scene navigator here on the right hand side, which you can click on, and you can go to that scene immediately, and you could see the dialogue. I'm sorry, the screenplay down here. If it's an FDX file, if, again, if it's an S as in Sam EX file, you won't see this information that down there because it doesn't import. And all the colored, colored stuff comes in, which is all the tags, okay? So let's go here to, to scene three, for example. If I, let me go back to my PowerPoint, because if I do go by my PowerPoint, I go way off and I and, and this is going to wait a little long. Okay, check screenplay for import errors. Okay, this is what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do first before I go into tagging, okay? So the, the first thing you really want to do is you want to check for errors because it is very possible, especially if you do the FDX file, you have some unknown scenes that come in or some blank scenes, it's very possible. A one error that you could have, and I've seen this a lot in Final Draft, is, let me go back to Final Draft real quick. So for example, here we have the character Barney, uh, who happens to be a janitor in the screenplay. But let's say the writer on, in, in scene eight or nine or 10, instead of typing in Barney as the uh, name of the character, typed in janitor, which is possible because the writer is just typing and da, da 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 or maybe misspelled Barney for whatever reason and didn't fix it because format assistant might not catch the misspelling, you know, and it comes in as, as what will happen is it'll come in as two characters. So you'll see here cast members, you'll see Barney and janitor. Okay, so you can fix that here in Gorilla. What you want to do is you want to combine these elements, combine cast members to one. So let's say, for example, now I don't have the error here, but I'm going to I'm going to create the error. OK, I'm literally going to create an error for you. Isn't that nice? OK, so let's say I'm going to call this janitor. OK, uh, edit element after creation. Uh, no, we don't have to do that. I want to click janitor. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to scene a scene here. Let's say scene five and I'm. Let's see, scene five. So janitor or Barney's not in scene five, but I'm going to go into cast members and say, and add janitor to scene five, okay? So now, if you could just use your imagination, Barney, remember, is the janitor. So what I did is, let's say in the screenplay for scene five, I typed in dialogue, janitor, and another character, Chubby, for example, and it wasn't fixed. So now I go here and I'm like, oh, shoot. I've got janitor in scene 11 or scene five, and he really should be Barney. And I'm like, oh, how am I going to fix it? I got a janitor, Barney. This is a mess. You And if you click Barney here, you're, you're just adding Barney to the scene and janitor. He's not going to fix it. So let's fix that. So in order to do that, we're going to go to elements. Let me turn off all these little video reminders. And we're going to find janitor, okay? And we could do this. We could filter find janitor here. And here's janitor right there, right all the way at the bottom. Nope, right? and click info. And what we're gonna do is we are going to use the combine element feature. And you could do this with anything, not just with cast members. You could do it with props, set dressing, what have you. So if you go over here and notice under schedule, there's an option that says combine elements, right? So um, another video. Okay, so um, well, actually, you know what you wanna do you want to go to the, this is going to the janitor. I want to go to Barney. So let's do that. You want to go to the main one. Okay. And then select schedule combine elements. 
And now it's saying, okay, who do you want to merge? Not necessarily who, I'm saying the word who. What do you want to merge Barney with? Like, who do you want to merge to it? And I'm going to say the, uh, the janitor, which is 11. And it's giving you this little message here. Okay, the master element is Barney. You are about to combine the element below with the above master element, janitor. So I'm going to click on combine. And the elements are combined. No. So now if I go to uh, scenes over here, notice that scene five, that was the one that I had janitor on, is now <clears throat> um, uh, says Barney. Okay. So, and if I go and uh, to notice that in the list here, you don't see the janitor uh, character. And if I go here, there's Barney right there. And if I go to cast members, there's Barney. There's no janitor here. So it's cleaned up. Okay. All right. So that is how you fix one of those errors. All right. Let's go to the next one here. Um, duplicate categories. I've seen this also where <clears throat> a lot of times in final draft, sometimes costumes is tagged as wardrobe or sometimes optical effects is CGI or sometimes animals is livestock. And sometimes you have both in there that come in. It's very possible because you could create a category in final draft. And if you create a duplicate category that comes in, same thing. You have a duplicate category. So what you can do is also, uh, and I don't think it's here. I think it's in elements also, but here's how you modify those names, right? So let's go back to elements. And in here, there's an option. I'll just show it to you because I'm not going to go through it because I don't have that error. Just like there's a combined elements, there's a combined categories. So if, for example, you're say I have uh, co uh, costumes, and if I had wardrobe, I don't think I have wardrobe here, I could select wardrobe, and then it will merge costumes and wardrobe together. So there's a lot of things here that can clean up your schedule before you even start breaking it down. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. And that is, uh, do I do this first and then tagging? Okay, we do edit, screenplay, and prescribing, and then we'll do tagging. Perfect. So. Now, another thing you can do also to clean up your screenplay is literally clean up your screenplay. I've seen many things that come in uh, with some errors, sometimes even the import, sometimes there's strange characters that come in. A lot of things happen. Remember, Final Draft is a different company. It's not us. So it's very possible that uh, you know there are uh, uh, inconsistencies between, the, between importing F their FDX into our, our program. So let's go ahead real quick and see what we can do. So there's no errors in this particular scene, but if I if I wanted to notice that we're still in tags mode because it's colored, okay? We also now have an edit screenplay mode. This is brand new in Studio 8. So what you can do is there's two ways you can get to edit screenplay mode. Under here, under the screenplay uh, pull down, you can select tagging mode and then edit screenplay. This is brand new. So if I select that, What's going to happen, if you can see, is that the screenplay display, the colors go away. Okay, so the colors go away, and that means you're no longer in tagging mode. So what we're going to do is we're going to click here, and if you click on it, it's going to come up with a screenplay, um, your lines. Each line will be one uh, line, and you can literally edit a line. So if I say here, let's say I want to edit this line. This is an action line. And I wanted to add, let's see, uh, and I don't want to be creative because I'm not in creative mode. So I'm just going to say some more stuff uh, here and there, and let's see, and there is a uh, pig and I'm telling you what, she wild is and a cow and a horse. Okay. Only reason I did that is so I can tag some stuff. So I could click on right close this and it's going to add that stuff here you see right here here's the the dialogue i'm, I'm sorry the uh, yeah the action that i added in the edit screenplay mode now you can delete stuff you can add stuff you could do whatever you want and then what you could do is you go back to tagging mode okay and it's going to go back into tagging mode and now you can tag it okay now i didn't even go over tagging yet but what you can do is there's three ways to tag in gorilla i'm going to show you all three ways first and I'm, i'll do it with all all of these elements here so first you could click on uh, i'm sorry highlight the the phrase or the word that you want to tag click on the space bar and i uh pig i did pig so pig is a livestock uh element 
and click tag. And notice that pig is highlighted in the color of the category of livestock. And pig is attached here to the scheduled elements for scene. Let's do cow. Now, this time I'll do cow a different way. I'm going to go to livestock over here. And notice pig is there in the list. I'm going to click here. I'm going to type in cow and close that. And now cow is, is, is added to the scene. Now, it's not highlighted yet because I just have to refresh the screen. But if I were to just to go to another scene, let's say I just go to scene four and go back to scene five, for example, boom, it would highlight cow. So that's two ways to tag. The third way to tag is to go to the element and tag it to the scene. So um, let's go into uh, elements. And this is, these are all livestock, right? So I have th two here. I can add... Uh, this is going to be livestock. Okay, horse. And I don't need to edit element after creation. Click OK. Oh, uh, no, yes, 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 yes. Let's do that. Yeah, click OK. And notice that I created an element called horse. So what I can do here is click. Now, of course, I could do a lot of other things here, but I can click on scenes. And I think I was in scene five, right? So click plus and then uh oh, I think I hit scene six. I hit scene six by mistake, but I'll do scene five also. Okay, close that up, close that up, and check it out. I've got pig, cow, and horse now in scene five. So there are three ways to tag things. Okay, and it's up to you what sometimes you want to do it this way, sometimes you want to do it that way. You you can only tag things on, on screen, of course, if they're there. So if you want to tag something like barn, let's you want to put the they, they they're in the barn, but barn is not in the in the action. You can go over, you know, to set dressing down over here, and you could say, let me add barn, okay, and click OK. And boom, barn is added, and you can see there's barn. And of course, it's not going to show in the display because barn is not in the action, okay? So those are the three ways to tag your screenplay. So of course, you got to, this is, this is quite laborious to go through the entire, it's fun too, I mean, sometimes, but this is basically how you go through the entire uh, screenplay, the entire, all the breakdown sheets now, and tag all your elements, your props, your set dressing, your costumes, et cetera, all right? Again, if there's any questions, please interrupt me because I'm, I'm, I'm going forward. So, uh, oh, printing. All right, this is brand new also. Uh, we have a feature now that you could print the scene and it's really printing a side, basically. Uh, so... If you see this little print button, it's all you do is you know click on it, and let's say you want to print this scene. It's really it's not to print the entire screenplay; it's to print the scene on the set. So if you need sides for the actors or just to print the scene, if you want to do that, and notice of course if you do that, there is a pig and cow and horse that's added to the particular scene because we added it using the uh, the edit screenplay mode, right? So that's brand new in Gorilla 8. Okay, so let us go now to our PowerPoint and see what's next. Oh, the three methods of tagging, which I did on screen by category and from the element. Okay, so remember that. Three ways of tagging your, sc your screenplay in Gorilla. Element linking. So I'm going to move on to element linking. So again, if there are any questions, please interrupt me. So what element linking allows you to do Sorry, I thought I heard something. What element linking allows you to do is it allows you to link elements together, okay? So I've done a, a couple of, uh, <clears throat> uh, of samples here. So for example, if I wanted to uh, see Barney, who's a cast member, uh, and every time you see him, you want him with a certain outfit or a certain uh, uh, wardrobe, or costume, hat, what have you, you can link them together okay so i you can see that there's a little link chain link here uh next to barney which means he is linked to something okay maybe one or or more elements so i want to close that up i'm going to go to elements and let me look at cast members and go to barney and notice the uh, there's a linked tab here if you click on it, and there's a video on it, right? 
Barney, we have a group here called, and we could do many groups. So you could do as many groups as you want. This is, I just called it Barney group. So Barney is attached to two elements. One is a uh, wardrobe or costume as t-shirt, and the other is a prop, a plunger. So that means that any time, now I can add something else. Let me see, let me go in here and oh, let's select the group. Uh, if I wanted to add, uh, let's see, let's see, what can we add here? Um, plunger we did, cupcake, okay, <laughs> why not? So if I wanted to add, uh, you know, a, a cupcake, for example, or or something else to that, you could do that. I'm not sure why that's not uh, doing it, maybe because I have to select the uh, the group. There we go. Maybe that's why. There we go. Okay. I wasn't, the group wasn't selected, so it didn't know where to go. So if I wanted to add cupcakes to Barney, which means every time that I see, we see Barney, we want those three elements to be there together with Barney. So what I have, what I can do now is I can close that up and let me go to a scene here that Barney's not in. And he is there. Let me see here. Okay. Uh, oh, there's hostess cupcakes. That, that just happens to be there by, by default. I must have done this somewhere else. Let me see here. Oh, come on. Let me find something that Barney's not in. Okay. And there's, oh, let me just delete cupcake. Let me just delete everything. Hold on. Let me just delete everything. Why not? Remove scheduled elements. Okay. So now we don't have anything tagged to this scene, which is totally fine. So now we're going to click on cast members and click on Barney. And what's going to happen is Barney will come in with those elements attached. Okay. So that's really cool if you have a, a character that's a villain that always has a cape, you know, if you're doing a Marvel movie or Star Wars or whatever, and they're always, you know, having a, a helmet or something like that. And you don't want to do that individually because you have to add elements individually to everybody. Okay, let's go to the next scene. Um, right, I mean, next presentation. How to black out an element. Okay. So, uh, Similarly uh, to, uh, there's three three different blackouts. I'm only going to go through one. You can black out a scene. You can black out um, actors. But I'm going to show you how to black out a, a, a particular element. So let's say, for example, a certain extra is not available on a certain scene, a certain day. So if I were to go here to elements, and let me see my extras, and uh, man in pool okay let's say man in pool now let me see here um uh Mar this is march 9th right okay so march 9th this scene is scheduled for march 9th so let's just make it easy and say that we're going to add this extra as a blackout day for march and this is 2024 so i got to make sure i do the right thing march 9th right sorry perfect Automatically, it'll say conflict, conflict, shoot day. So there's a shoot day there. So if I were to go, and that, there's a little blackout symbol there too. If I were now to go to man in pool here and uh, add that to this particular scene, we can add him. No one's going to say no, but Gorilla's not going to say no. But there's a flag here that says, okay, there's a conflict. So you need to look at that, okay? So that's going to help you. Um, with your uh, blackouts, with your element con element element blackouts. All right. Remember, you could also do that with scenes, and you could do that with uh, with other things too. Okay. Manage elements and categories. Okay. Perfect. So we I've gone back and forth from breakdown to elements a lot. So uh, you've seen that. So if I click on elements here, this is my element manager. And by default, it usually comes in just alphabetical, but there's an option here to filter. So if you just want to see your props, you could just see your props. If you just want to see your cast members, you could just see your cast members. If you click on ID, you could sort it by cast members. If you wanted to sort by element, you could do that. Very easy to go through and kind of, okay, where, where are the livestock? Oh yeah, those are the livestock. So you could, this is sort of management of all elements. Each element, uh, also you can go into the detail of that element. So if I wanted to go into pig info, I can do a whole bunch of stuff here. First of all, in this first detail tab, you can add a board ID, not usually elements that are not cast members don't have board IDs, but you could certainly do that. You could do a description. So 
um, my daughter had 4-H, so we had pigs. So you could do a 4-H pig here. Oh, uh, uh, oh sorry. 4-H pig, you know, black and white. Can't type on this tiny keyboard. Okay, uh, whatever, whatever you want to do. If there's a contact for that element, if this element is available, um, you could do rates down here. Rates that you enter here, you can import into the budget, okay, if for a budget for the schedule. And then over here in the scenes tab, you could see all the scenes that that element is in, which is very helpful. So if I wanted, not only can you see the, 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 the scenes that the element is in, you can add uh, uh, scenes that the element, remember I showed you this is one of the ways of adding, okay? Also tagged as, it's a feature I don't go over in this, uh, in this uh, webinar, but there's a feature that uh, allows you to have a different name, but is the same element, okay? Not going to go over that. We do have a video on that. Uh, linked, if you wanted to link, blackout dates, et cetera. So that's all the info information there. Anything else here? Category management. So the same thing about element management is category management. Again, what's a category? Category is, let me find them here. Manage categories. Here we go. Categories are the, uh, the top level of the element. So what does the element belong to? Okay. If it's a prop, it belongs to the prop category. If it's a, if it's makeup, it belongs to the makeup category, right? So that makes a lot of sense. Here you can uh, modify the color of the category. You can change the abbreviation here. It'll immediately tell you the count, which is really cool. So we're already looking at, oh, we've got 10 cast members. We've got 19 props. Um, we've got nine costumes. Um, very cool to look at that. And you can, there's all these untitles here. So if you wanted to add another category, you could just select one of those, rename it, and add that category to your breakdown. Okay. So let's see here. Okay. I'm about to go into another section. So if there are any L uh, questions about screenplay or breakdown, which are the first two sections, you can ask those. Otherwise, I'm going to go into the next section, which is location. Okay, I'll move forward. So what is, uh, let me go through, let me look at the PowerPoint real quick, excuse me. Uh, location versus set, okay. Uh, a location, uh, I'm sorry. A set. A set is a location in the world of the screenplay. So, for example, if the screenplay says exterior, the deck of the Titanic, you know that the physical location where you're going to shoot this particular scene, James Cameron did not go to the Titanic to shoot the, the scenes. He was on a soundstage somewhere. Um, location is the physical location where the scene is to actually taking place. Example, Studio 101 in Burbank, California. So very important to know the difference between set and location, especially when you go to the board, okay? So if I'm looking at this particular uh, scene, you can see that the set says ledge fourth floor. So obviously it's in an apartment building of, of, of sorts in the world of the screenplay. And the location, now we just wrote Amanda's apartment, but this is supposed to be the physical location of the actual scene, where you're going to go shoot the scene. So let me go into locations. If you click locations up here, this will take you to the locations module. Now here we've got uh, six or seven locations and each one of these locations is a physical locale, okay? So for example, Sam's Diner is really Sam's Diner that is located at one, two, three, four, Sandy Lane. I'm sure that's not real, but or in Dayton, Ohio. But in any case, this is supposed to be an actual physical location. And of course, you could put photos of that location if you wanted to, contact information, uh, et cetera. Now, the scenes I'm going to get to in a minute. See this scenes tab. This is very important. So what you can do now is you can attach Sam's Diner to a scene in the breakdowns. So if I go to, now I, I think I have a few here interior diner night, right? So if I go to scene 13, notice this is an interior diner and the location is Sam's diner, okay? Makes sense. Now, if I click on here, it's gonna show me the list of all my locations that I can create 
in the locations field. Okay. So uh, let's now go into another one. And here's another one, interior diner. And uh, Sam's diner is also Sam's diner. Okay. So even though it looks the same, you know, similar, it's not. Okay. I could literally go through and say, and say, well, let's put that in a managed apartment. Well, it's not going to make sense on the board, but this is something that you need to go through and add a location for every single scene. Okay. Let me put this back to diner. And I'll show you why when we go to the board, All right? Okay, so uh, creating a location in breakdown, creating location locations, link a location to set. I think I did all of that. I just didn't show you how to create a location. But what you can do is you can go down here into the plus sign and just there you go. That's pretty simple uh, to do. Once you create that location, it will be available to you to attach to a breakdown sheet, okay? All right. Let's go on to oops, some file draft. The next one, which is the the rate. Okay, so uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna mention this. I'm not gonna go over it because I think we're going to the next section. But in locations, if you go to it, you can enter a, a budget. So, for example, this one here, there's a a number to it. So, if you wanted to enter a a budget for that particular here we go a budget for that particular location, you could do so. And then you could import that location along with the budget into the linked uh, budget, okay? Later on when you start to do your budget. Okay, shoot days. Let's move over to shoot days. So once you've got your screenplay imported, you've got your, your breakdowns done, your elements done, uh, et cetera, and locations, that's important too. You gotta do your locations. You can then go into shoot days. So let's do that. Let's create a calendar. Actually, we already have one, but I will show you how to do it. So if you go to, we'll go to uh, back up to scene one here. If you click on the shoot days button, it will take you to the shoot days screen or the calendar. Now here you can create shoot days. And basically what you're doing is you're creating what's called a phase or a production phase. And within that production phase, there are shoot days attached to it. So to create, a phase you would have you would go down here to the plus sign uh, enter a name for the phase you could just use one of these names that we have here usually it's you know for principal photography second unit pre-production that kind of thing and then you could attach day start and end dates and give it a color give the phase a color okay so i've already done this i've actually done this three times because i've created three phases for this shoot you don't have to create more than one phase for a shoot you could just do one phase but in this instance, I've done three. One is called principal photography. One is called pickups a couple of weeks later. And one is called underwater shoot. So I'll just concentrate on the first phase, which is principal photography. And here you can see the dates. The red uh, indicates an off day. Okay. And you can specify that when you create the shoot days, or you can specify that after you create the shoot days. And I'll show you how to do that. So once you've done your calendar, you can go through and each day, dig down on each day and start scheduling things that you need for that day. So if I click on the first day, we're going to go to the detail of the first particular day. And so we're going to, we're in the first day now. Uh, you could see over here on the top left, it says March 1st. 6 a.m. by default is the uh, call time. You can change that, of course, just by clicking on it and changing the call time. You can enter the sunrise information, the sunset information if you want. And then you can enter the first shot, all that kind of stuff. All this information you can, you can enter this video. Okay, so we're on March 1st. We're looking here at the crew call times and the tab. And you can notice all the tabs here. All these tabs are basically here just to accommodate and to cater to March 1st, to our shoot day, March 1st. Okay, so here I've got all my crew. Look at that. I've got all my crew entered here. So let's say, for example, I'm going to get rid of them all by deleting them. There. Now, it's kind of scary that I did that. I just removed them for the shoot day. I didn't delete the people. Okay, so let's say I come in here for the very first time and I want to add some crew. I could do this one of two, two or three ways, actually. You can literally go to the crew module up there, or you can click on the plus sign here. Now, I've already created my crew. And you could literally go through each one and say, well, let's say I want the DP and the makeup artist and the hairstylist and what have you and do it that way. Or 
just delete this real quick. You can say, just add them all. Just add all crew to the shoot day, which is what I did. And then you can go through each call time and say, well, let's give this guy 6.30. Let's give this guy eight o'clock. And each individual crew member can have their own individual call time. Okay. Um, and uh, there's an OC here, by the way, the OC means on call. So if I click that, that means that there's, there's no call time for them, but they better be ready to go if they're called for that day, all right? The cast call times, which is the second tab, this tab here, uh, notice the difference here. If I go to crew call times, notice that there's a plus sign down there, which allows you to add crew to that particular shoot day. The cast call times, there's no plus sign down here because you cannot add cast to a shoot day. You add cast to a scene, okay? And that's where the strip board comes in. And I'll get back, get to that in a minute. Now, all these other tabs like weather, um, uh, hospital, atmosphere, uh, customized call sheet, all this is for the call sheet. Now, I'm not going to go over a lot of these because these are very detailed um, things that we have for the call sheet that you could do. But I will show you where to go if you want to learn more about it. And we've got our training videos, scheduling, and we've got one, two, three, four, six lessons just on how to use the call sheet module, okay? So if you wanted to learn how to do customize your call sheet, how to print your call sheet, all that kind of stuff, those are the lessons to watch. All right, let's go back here and see how we're doing. Uh, set day is an off day, let's do that. Uh, if you wanted an off day, so if, if I select here, notice that uh, you could select your days here. So you get another shortcut instead of going back to the calendar and creating a, a, selecting a day to go to it. If I select three, two, and notice that there's this is an off day, you just select the little check mark here if it's an off day, and that'll give you this big red X, and you shouldn't schedule any crew on an off day uh, because you're not shooting on an off day. So let's go back to three, one. Okay, and this is actually kind of cool because it shows you how many crew are scheduled for the day. So if I were to go to three, four, right, which is a shoot day, and let's say I, I, it's a smaller day, for example. So I just need a few crew members and I'll just click a few there. Okay. And then go back up to the, up here. Notice it gives you the count of the crew, the crew needed for the day. So that's kind of cool. You could see 20 crew members needed, five crew members needed, et cetera. This is your principal photography phase again, all these dates. This is your underwater shoot days. This is your pickup days. Okay. You could see how organized that is, right? Let's go back here, set days and off day, uh, how to modify. I don't know if I said that. If you go, if you want to modify the days, there's a few ways to do it. If I wanted to add, add a day to this phase, you have to make sure you're in the phase. So up here, principal photography, which is where I'm at, I'm at in this phase. If I click 11, it's going to say this day is not part of this phase. Do you want to add it to principal photography? You could click continue and it'll add it. If you wanted to shift all the days back or forth, there's a really cool feature here, if you click this, called push days forward or backward. So if I literally type in and say, my whole shoot has been pushed forward six months, okay? Um, you could literally, six months would be, you know, 180 days, right? So you just type 180. I'm not going to do it now, but you click OK. Boom, immediately, this will be, you know, April, May, June, July, August, September, whatever six months later would be. And that would be your start date, okay? If you wanted just to, you know, change it from, you know, 3.2 to 3.10 or whatever, you could do that here too. You could just select the different dates that you want there and, and do that. So that's how you modify days, okay? All right, let's go to the next one. Uh, creating crew, I did that. Creating, importing crew from the crew module. I'm going to show you that. Attaching crew primary, okay. And call times. Okay, I kind of did most of this, but I didn't do importing crew. So let's do that. So remember, I showed you how to add crew from shoot days. You can also create crew from the crew module. So if I click on the crew module, you're going to see all your crew members here in this list. You could also do a filter here also, which is kind of cool. This time, instead of filtering through the category, you filter through the department. So if I want to see all my camera crew, if I had a second assistant camera here, they would be there, etc. If I wanted to see all my makeup, I probably only have one or two makeup in here. 
If I wanted to show all again, you go like that. So if I wanted to add crew, this is where you would do it. You could click on the plus sign here, add a crew, and then add a title to that crew. Okay. And we have, you know, tons of titles to choose from. You could select one of these or add one of your own. Another way to add crew is to import crew from either another schedule or a text or Excel file. So if both of them are pretty cool, if you wanted to do it, uh, an Excel file, if you click that, this will give you an import map, okay, to follow. So make sure that your Excel file, you don't have to use all these fields, but you really just need the first name and the last name, to be honest with you, maybe the email address, which is column I, right? So if you just do A, B, and I, and leave everything else blank, that'll work. And then you could do your, enter your, your titles and departments in Gorilla. And then import that. It'll bring all your crew in. But a really cool thing that we added is the ability to import crew from another schedule. So if you have multiple schedules, now I have only have uh, two here, but if I wanted to import, uh, 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 I'm sorry, three, this is the other two. If I wanted to import the crew from the Norman schedule, notice it's telling you that there are five crew there. I can click that and those crew members will, will pop into this schedule with all their contact information. Okay, so that's how you kind of manage your crew. Okay, uh, call times for crew. I showed you that, how you can do call times, right? Okay, Sunday Makashi. I started here. I started here. So let me let me go through here and see and do a call sheet. And what's the next one after that? I'm cheating. Printing. Okay, I'll do those two at the same time. Okay, let's go back to shoot days. So going back to shoot days, this uh, and then going into the call sheet area, which is uh, going into the day. Okay. Um, all once you get all this information in. Okay. Uh, you want to, you, you can, if you want to, you can print a call sheet. And we, with Gorilla Studio 8, we have now integrated Koala call sheets into Gorilla Studio 8, which um, we used to be a separate program that um, did integrate, but not nearly as nice as it does now. Now it's built in. So it's really, really cool. This is an add-on module, but if you get it, it's, it's, it's very, very cool. So what you can do here is literally click on the, uh, the print button here. But before you do that, there are all these different uh, uh, preferences. So for example, if I wanted to go into the gear button and I wanted to show, this is the order of the call sheet, right? So if I could select the order of how I want things to appear on my call sheet. So I can select uh, scenes first, then cast then crew. If I don't want elements, I can skip elements. So if I don't want to show all my props and this and that on the call sheet, because sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Shot information, da 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 all down here, all these other preferences, your production company, your logo, and then even more preferences here. Show it this way, show it that way. There's so many different things you can do. And then, okay, that's fine. So we really didn't do much. And then we can go here and click on call sheet. What it'll allow you to do is it lets you to select a template to 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 to, uh, to use. And you can sort of see basically what it looks like in this in this uh, little uh, little image. And then of course there the next the ones on the next page are the same thing but with a logo. Okay, attached. So if I just select the first one, for example, I'll tell you, I'll explain that in a minute with the weather forecast means. Um, what it'll do is it'll compile your call sheet from the da data that's basically in uh for that day. Okay. So you can see here that uh, uh that's blank because I didn't select my primary crew. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But you have your location information here. Um, you've got your uh, your crew call here, right? Uh, the scenes here. It's a little. Remember, call sheets. They're trying to squish as much information as you. This is a legal U.S. legal uh, page. They try to squish as much information as you can. This is like a six point call sheet. I can you see six point, and you got all, all this stuff down here, and even the next advanced schedule and stuff like that. And if you look at it, you're like, oh, I don't want to see catering. Look down here. It, it, I know it's really hard to see, but there's a catering section. You can go through and just delete that. Not delete it, but hide it. So if you didn't want to see the catering section, you go back here and say, I don't want to see catering, right? Just skip it. And so you could definitely customize how you want your call sheet to look and feel based on uh, a lot of these things here, okay? Uh, so that is that. And customize... This one here, this allows you to add lines that are not 
in Gabon. So anything that's not crew, cast, catering, weather, these are all things that, okay, weather will show this, da, da, da. Let's say you want to add your own stuff, anything. This allows you to create, we have a whole video on this. I, it's one of those videos in the Koala Call Sheets that allows you to add whatever lines and, and things you want on the call sheet that is not pulled from Gorilla, whatever you want, okay? So that's pretty cool. All right, let's go on now. Uh, so emailing, okay, uh, I did printing, right? Oh, I think so, yeah, because I, I did the preview and then you could select print. So emailing a call sheet, the way emailing works, and again, if you wanted to use the email feature, it's not just for a call sheet, it's for any any gorilla report and i'm going to show you all the gorilla reports in a minute but what you what you can do is you can set up what's called email groups okay so if you go to the extras pull down menu we have a video on this right and there's a lot of information to grab and you select email groups which is the very first thing here and what you can do here this is going to show you all your contacts first of all okay and all the contacts are basically from your your crew and your and your actors Right, that's where it's bring, bring, put it all, bringing all this information from. The C, the blue C indicates crew, and the red A indicates uh, actor. And um, you can see that not everyone has an email address. Um, it'll say no email address entered. But if you have an email address entered, you could email, you could uh, email that crew crew member or that list. So let's say, for example, I want to create. A, a, a group, and this is what you want to do. I'm going to create a group called crew. Now you can call it whatever you want. It doesn't have to be crew. And then click, uh, select crew and click OK. And what this does basically is it selects, I'm sorry, it selects a crew. Oh, I already had one in there as crew, if you saw that. Um, what it allows you to do, I already had one. So that's fine. It, it, it creates a group called crew. Uh, and attaches all the C's to it, okay? So for example, if I wanted now to, okay, so let's do this. If I wanted to print a call sheet, I'm gonna just do this uh, first. Let's go back here, call sheet, and uh, select the, the call sheet. Uh, weather forecast, by the way, the way that works, why that comes up all the time, is that if you are uh, five days or, or less, uh, you can, uh, Gorilla can get, go to the weather API and get the weather for the locale, but we're this is 2024, so obviously we can't get the weather. So let's go ahead and save this as a PDF. I'll just call call it call sheet. Oops, there we go, and put it to desktop uh, documents. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, I guess documents is fine. Oh, here we go, desktop. Okay, oh, we now confirm that we have a PDF, right? Okay, so now let's do the email. So I'm going to go extras, uh, email groups, and I'm going to say continue. And well, hold on, I'm going to select the group first. All right? Crew, and then continue. And what it's going to do is it's going to grab all the emails from the crew group. Okay, uh, you could say this is a test call sheet. And, uh, and then click send. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to open up your email app. Now, if you're on Mac, it'll be, uh, you know, mail. If it's Windows, it's uh, Out Outlook. So you can make sure those are set up. And to be honest with you, I have Gmail, okay? I don't have a Mac.com account, but I set up my Apple Mail to connect to my Gmail. So even if you have a different email program for using Gmail, you could still connect your Gmail account to Apple Mail, probably know that. So anyway, once you set that up, you can then click that. Notice all the all the twos come in, right? And then just click on the little paper clip, find the um, call sheet, which is in my on my desktop, right? I think, well, let's just select that one. Oh, there it is, there's another one. That's, a, that's the one I did before. Uh, and that's a test, that's a, a call sheet and send it. And so immediately my, my cast and crew will get uh, my PDF, okay? Let's close that out. All right, let's see how we are here. 
the strip board. Okay, great. We're the last section now is strip board. We'll have a Q and A at the end. Okay, so this is really cool. Also, so um, let's go to the strip board. Scene timing is a brand new feature that we added in uh, in eight. So what this allows you to do. So notice that there's a tab here called scene timing. This wasn't here before. If you click on scene timing, what it allows you to do is it allows you to uh, uh, segment your breakdown sheets into different things that need to be done on that day for that scene, okay? So for example, this is just an example. We need prep camera. We start at 6 a.m. to go to 6.30. Prep lighting, 6.30 to 7.30. Block scene, 6.30 to 7.30. And you can do details. I didn't put any details here. Rehearse scene, 7.30 to 8.30. And it, this will calculate the time, right? for all these uh, uh, items separately. And it'll be three and a half hours. And notice it'll pop it up here to three and a half hours. And you can literally say, do not add time. So sometimes notice this is six to 6.30, 6.37. Uh, notice this one right here, the second number two and three is the same hour and you don't want it to calculate. So if I click on do not calculate, it changes to two, two hours, 30 minutes because it's not calculating. The, it, you still want the event we're still going to block the scene, but it's sharing. It's a different uh, group of people doing it. The people that are blocking the scene, the people that are probably the lighting, right? So you can do that. So if you want to manipulate the time and when you go to the board, you'll see that time on the daybreak. Okay. The calculator on the daybreak. I'm going to show you that now. I think that's the next place we're going to go is the, um, the board. Okay, great. So what the strip board is now, we're, we're, we're getting to the to the last section of scheduling, is uh, we've done our breakdown sheets and we've done our um, uh, shoot days and all. So what we want to do now is we want to, oops, I'm sorry, it's going a little, there we go. Okay, computer's going a little wonky. Either I'm going too fast or the computer's going too fast. There we go. Let's try it again. There we go. Okay. So the board is basically a way to uh, combine or or tell tell Gorilla what days you're going to shoot what scene. Okay. So for example, on this sample here, we have day one, which is the black the the black strips are day, uh, daybreak strips, and then on top of it, you're going to have the scenes to be shot on that day. So. Uh, we've got two scenes on day one, two scenes on day two, et cetera. And there are many, 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 many ways to work with your board. I'm going to create a new board here. I, I already have one called sort by location. Okay, I did one already. And what this does is it'll sort it by location. So what this does is notice that I remember I did the Sam's Diner, right? So I can literally go, I sorted this by location, and I can literally do all the Sam's Diner together and all the Amanda's apartments together, because this is sorted by location, right? Uh, as opposed to sorting by scene number, for example. And if you wanted to change the sort, you can certainly do that by clicking here. Once you do that though, it'll mess up your board. So be careful when you do this. Um, it overwrites, notice it says right here, sorting the board will overwrite the existing sort. So if you want to play with the sort, it's best to do a new board. So for example, if I click on new board, oh, it's asking me to save. If you, uh, you could save multiple boards, by the way. So I've got, you could see, I've got like five or four boards here. So if you want to play with different sorts, you want to create a new board every time you do that, or at least when you're doing, a, 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 you know, a, a lot of different um, changes. So if I click on new board, I'm going to click, I'm going to call this um, play sort, okay? And select a phase. Remember the phase is, are the shoot days, the group shoot days. So I'm going to select principal photography and create board. And what this is going to do is you're going to create a brand new board, nice and clean. Uh, the, the C numbers there, all my shoot days are on the bottom. And then I can go ahead and do whatever I want. Now, I could literally go through the sort now and say, okay, now I want to sort by a location name. Or now I want to sort by day night. Or now I want to sort by set. Now, remember the difference between location and set right? Location is the physical location you're going to shoot. Set is the world of the screenplay. Let's do set, even though you really should do location. 
But let's say you didn't do location, you didn't create your locations, you didn't attach your locations to your scenes, you could do set. And it's giving you a warning. It's saying, okay, oh, the world has a lot of warnings. They're telling you, okay, you're going to mess up your sort. But all the apartments now are together. All the bait, all the uh, diners are still together because they're in the set. The set, the diners are still the set, right? And then what you can do is you can click on the auto. Let's save it again. You can click on the auto daybreak feature, right? Which allows you to uh, daybreak. Let's call it, let's say three days and two eights. So this will create a daybreak every three uh, uh, pages and three and two eights, you know, screenplay pages, right? So that's not too bad, actually. So notice that you had this Beverly Hills was down here, but notice the diners all here. All these are clumped together. Perfect, right? So then you can modify it, you know, what, what you want, da, 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 save your board. And now you've got multiple boards. Now it's, this is a backup you could turn off, by the way, it's doing a, a board backup. So, if you click board up here, this is going to show you all your boards. The one that is checkmarked green is your default board. Okay. So every time you print a report or do a data days or do whatever you want to do, it's going to default to this. You can change that. These are just, these are your play boards or your temporary boards. Okay. Right now, anything that you do with Gorilla in terms of reports is going to be based on your principal or your default board. So let's go back to our default board. Okay. All right. Let's see what's next. Sort by, auto sort, auto day breaks. Doing good. Moving multiple strips. Okay, I'll show you that. Um, okay. Um, I think I might have showed you that, but if you wanted to move a strip, you just click on it and, you know, move it up or down. If you want to do multiple strips, you just use the shift key and move it up or down, right? Uh, if you want to do non-contiguous strips, or not cons contiguous or consecutive, I don't know. I think you do the, this one, so the, the option. You can't see what I'm doing, but you do that, and then you can move those up or down, right? Um, what was else was there? I forgot. Moving multiple, shift, command, banner. Okay. Another thing you want to do sometimes is create a banner strip. So let's go ahead and save our board because I think we did some changes. And a banner is basically a uh, it's just a note on your board. So if I wanted to put a banner between apartment and diner, let's say it's a company move. Okay. So how do you select strips and move together? Uh, I just I did show you that. So select um, those three and just drag and drop. And those three moved. Okay. I literally just moved those three. You just you select. Uh, I'm doing a shift select right now. So uh, if I move them back, hold down the shift key. Oh, sorry, there we go. shift. There we go. And it's notice it says the gray, it says multiple strips over there, if you can see. And then there we go. Those three move down there. Okay. Um, and you can also, uh, I really should turn that off. That's really annoying. Um, yes, but you moved scenes that weren't together. Right, that, it's the, uh, the option, the, um, you can, uh, I moved scenes, no, I moved scenes that were together, that they were together. If you do the command key on the on the keyboard, you can do scenes that like that, that are not together. You have to hold down the key. I, I, you can't see me, but I'm holding down the command key when I select the board. Those three, these three non-contiguous, -con -cons you want to use contiguous. Uh, now, if I drag apartment 6C, all those three will move. Okay, yeah, good. I'm glad. Okay. Um, oh, that's print. No, no, I don't want that. I wanted to save. There we go. Okay. Oh, let me turn that off because that's driving me nuts. Um, scheduling preferences. And there we go. So now it's not going to back up to Excel every time I say it's a nice feature. This is added to, um, because a lot of people, I want my board that I did seven saves ago. I'm like, well, we, I'm sorry, but now we have that. It literally takes two seconds to save it to Excel, but you have to go back and kind of re, re, you know figure it out. But it saves to an Excel file. Okay, but now I turn that off. Okay, so now, uh, oh, so up here horizontal horizontal large for those people over sixty, which I'm getting there, and then horizontal thin if you wanted to really see a lot, you really you know a lot a long board or vertical if you wanted to do the old style vertical right. And then back to vertical, uh, horizontal, right? Um, 
was I going to show you a oh, banner banner. So let's say you have a company move between these two scenes. You click where you want the banner to appear. You select insert banner and you can type just a small note. It's not meant to be, you know, a whole, you know, big thing, but it's supposed to just be a note. Okay. You could do whatever you want here and then save the board. And now we've got a banner. Okay. That will print on the board. That's how you do banners. All right, customize the board. All right. And then we'll do printing. So the nice thing about Gorilla also is that uh, you can customize the board to your liking because a lot of times people want certain things, fields on the board and don't need other fields. So for example, in this uh, example here, we've got our interior exterior field here in column four. Sometimes you want it over there. You want the first thing you want to see is, is it interior exterior? I have the scene over here. Sometimes you want the scene over there. That's sheet number, by the way. That's not scene. It happens to be the same right now. But let's say I want the exterior uh, over there, right? Not over there. Well, how would you do that? What you can do is you can click this print strip board uh, design button. And what you can do is then move the interior exterior field from A4 to a one. Okay, so in, in the customized board, you can move things around, you can uh, modify the synopsis field and so that it doesn't, uh, a lot of times it, it, it carries over into another uh, uh, cell and you can shorten that up if you wanted to. Um, you can save different uh, customized board sorts, uh, uh, I'm sorry, save different customized board uh, scenarios. Okay, so if you wanted one where the exterior field is on the left and one where it's on the right, you could do that. Okay, let's go on to the next thing, and that is uh, the save custom design. I showed you that. Uh, print export the strip board and strip board permits. Okay, so if you wanted to print your board once you're done with it, you could just select the print button and select the uh, the phase that you want to select, and then you could print the board. And there are many different ways to print the board. This is just showing you the uh, the uh, um, portrait landscape uh, way. But if you wanted to print it uh, different ways, you really want to go into the print menu. And that's where I'm going to highlight now with the print menu. This is where you can go through and uh, schedule. I'm sorry, not schedule, but you can select different reports to, to view. And one of them is the strip board. So if I wanted to go to production reports down here to strip board and click on the gear button, this is going to tell you if you want to print the strips in black and white, if you want to print the landscape, if you want to print the synopsis, all these little options here. And then there's tons of other reports here that you can uh, select from. So if you wanted to uh, see what that report looks like, you can click on the sample button, and this is going to give you a sample of that report. So you can see here, uh, this is what the shooting schedule report looks like. If you wanted to go to one line schedule, for example, I think we have that. This is what that's going to look like. If you wanted to see what the data days is going to look like, you can select data days. So this is really a great way. It, there's so many reports to go through and like character scene reports. That's pretty cool. It gives you the character and all the scenes that they're in. This is, is a really great way to kind of uh, go through and preview the report before you're going to actually print it. Okay. Exporting um, also you could be do from this screen. And now the difference between printing and exporting, printing is literally printing. You either print to a paper or, or, or to a PDF, the, a, a, a formatted report, right? With, the, with a header and all that. Um, exporting is just that. It's just a raw export of data. So if you wanted to export um, your shooting schedule, you could do that now. That's brand new. Uh, and you, then you could open it up in Excel and modify it to your liking. If you wanted to export your call sheet, you don't like any of our templates, and you want to do your own call sheet, you can export the data and then modify it in Excel. Or again, I'm using the word Excel because most people, that's what, what they would create reports in if they are uh, if they don't have Gorilla or if they're you know creating their own report. Okay, so basically, uh, that's how you, and there's tons of stuff to export, as you can see. But but if you go down to the, let me close the board, 
if you go down here to the breakdown sheet and go to the print button, this is going to give you sort of a quick preview of all the reports that, or not all the reports, of, of just some of the reports that Gorilla has. So if you did want to see the shooting schedule report or the day schedule report, you can click it very quickly and it'll print. But if you want to modify the report in terms of preferences, then you want to select the more reports button and then go into here and literally go through and say, okay, I really don't want to do this or I really don't want to print that or what have you. Over here is the company header information. So, and we have a video on that. This is where you would enter your um, your logo, for example, uh, and uh, address information that would appear on the top left-hand side of every single report, okay? That's printing and exporting. And, oh, the report menu, I did show you that in the sample reports. Okay, I think we're almost done here. And with Q and A. All right. Let's see. How did I do? Um, Ten minutes to spare. Oh, I wanted a little bit more time for Q and A, but um, okay. So uh, that is our intro to Gorilla Studio Eight. And if you have any questions right now about anything that I that I asked or anything at all about Gorilla, please feel free. Please feel free to ask me. Can you work two people from two different computers? Um, not on the same schedule. Uh, it's because it's the file is is local. It's not in the cloud. So if you're working on the schedule and you want someone else to work on it, you'd have to you know close it out or save it. So you can go to the manager and uh, and save the schedule to you could do save it to Dropbox if you want or iCloud documents folder and then send them that schedule and then they can load it on their computer and work on it but it's not a cloud-based program so not at the same time but two people can work on a budget and schedule because these are these are different files these save as different files so if you one person works on a schedule another person works on the budget that you can do because they're they save as separate files locally Excellent. Uh, Sarah, right. You emailed me today. Uh, perfect. Excellent. Thanks. Glad you could make it. You're welcome. So you can send the schedule and other person. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's just like anything else. Think about working on a screenplay, you know, the final, final draft, you'd save it, send it to someone, they would work on it, save it and send it back to you. It, it, it is a, it saves in, as a document. So if you, um, uh, let's see, hi, Gorilla. If you were to go to here, this is where it saves. If you're on a Mac uh, or Windows too, if you go to documents, Gorilla saved files, save schedules, this is where it would save right here, either the budget or the um, schedule. These are where the schedules save and uh, these are where the uh, budget save. So this is the file you'd want to send to them if it's a budget or schedule. And then uh, they could then load it up into their copy of Gorilla through the manager, work on it and send it back to you. And then you could either put it right back here and load it up into the project manager. We have a video on how to how to uh, save and load schedules. Excellent. I'm going to sign off unless there's another message. Uh, I'm sorry, unless there's another question. Uh, if you do, can think of a question... Uh, and, and you didn't get a chance to ask, you could chat us online or email us and we, we will be happy to answer you. Um, so that'll, I'm, I'll wrap it up now and I'll, I'll, I'll give one more chance for any other question for another 15 seconds and then I'll, I'll sign off. Great. All right, guys, thank you very, very much. And uh, thanks. Take care.